of result that no one saw coming. I mean, we knew we were going to get something pretty special in the women's 60. We knew we had, you know, the dynamics of the two Americans who are kind of not really talked about, but running good marks. And then the Polish athlete who we thought, you know, Iwa Swoboda was going to maybe put on an incredible, you know, low 6'9 potential. But she gets fourth. She runs actually the same time as Brianna Williams, who gets sixth. Third through six, all ran 704. So she finishes fourth outside the medals. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people had her at least getting second or third at the worst, but she falls all the way to fourth. And the story basically just gets hijacked by the Swiss, Kambunji, who she is one of those runners who I just always, she's always in a final. She's like the notorious, I can make a final runner. She's never going to have the glory of like the Jamaican trios or Shakari or whoever. She's always just going to be, I'm in the final and I'm going to finish anywhere between fifth and eighth, maybe a fourth on a, on a good day. And for her to come here into Belgrade and throw down not just a win, but an impressive win, a 696 win, a, dominant, a dominating win, and kind of just makes everyone like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, we forgot. You are one of the top runners in the world. Oh, wait, you do have the consistency of an elite runner where you can make final after final. And if you do look at the people who are in this final, Kambunji, Briscoe, St. Price, Soboda, Jackson, Williams, Michelle Lee, and Rosa. If you look at this list of these eight women who are in the final, Jackson, maybe, is the only one who has like a consistent representation of being at the top of their game at world championship level because Briscoe is not out there making global finals. St. Price, this is her first time representing Team USA. So Boda, we talked about her. She's never even broken 11 seconds. Jackson, in a way, she's been good, but that's a new good because she was a 400-meter runner. Brianna Williams is still kind of young, not really lighting the the world on fire. I, uh, Michelle Lee, she's been around Trinidad and Tobago, but she's on the, on the latter stages of her career. And then Rosa, I haven't even heard of her from Brazil. She got eighth in this race. So when you really think about it, Kambungi is like the one with the most pedigree. And now, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking this thing on a Friday afternoon, it actually makes sense that she were to win this race because there was no... Shakari Richardson in this race. There was no the there was no Shelly Ann Fraser Price. There was no Elaine Thompson Hurrah, right? There was no Aaliyah Hobbs. There was no Melissa Jefferson. Shout out NCAA. There was none. There's no, 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 none of that. So it makes sense that she wins this. So we kind of have egg on our face, but we put it on our face because Ken Bungie is been around for so long. Constant professional, makes finals. That's what she does. And when she's going up against, kind of when you look at it now, a weakened field, pedigree-wise, she's going to win it. And then she not just won it, she won it in 696. Very impressive time. I'm not sure what that is all time. I'm going to have to look that up, bring up track and field news, where 696 ranks all time in world history. Give me a second here. So 696 is good for one, two, three, fourth in world history. Fourth. All right. Privolo uh, Privolova of Russia, number one. Gail Devers ran 695, number two all time in 1993. Isn't that crazy? 1993. That's so long ago. Marion Jones ran 695 in 98. And then Merlin Adi ran 696 in 1992. Fourth all time, putting her name on the all-time record books in the 60s. Now, again, it is a 60, so we're not crowning her the next future Olympic champion, but it is a big show-me-respect moment that she got to have, and, you know, I'm all for it. We were, just, we were ignoring her. We're kind of just being like, oh, yeah, you're that athlete who just makes finals. But if you're an athlete who just makes finals, going up against a bunch of people who never go to finals, you should win that race. So impressive run for Ken Bungie of Switzerland. Kind of the, the highlight of the day for me because 
We just didn't see it coming. And when you look at Swoboda, who had kind of like the perfect season, she won every race. She ran sub seven. She was basically looking like she was on like, you know, she was having her breakout year. She was like the breakout star. If there was like an SB for breakout star, it would have been her after this indoor season. And, you know, she kind of just folded under the moment. I think she could have ran 696 in this race. I think she has that talent, but she doesn't have that experience of going through these three rounds. I mean, it was three rounds. Remember, three rounds in one, in one day, you know, one in the morning and then two in the afternoon or evening, afternoon for us. And I guess this was one of those kind of baptism by fire moments for her, for her to not really put it all together when it counted most. But she'll learn from it. And I hope, I really hope, I, I hope that she comes back from this fourth place finish and finds a way to excel at the 100 meters and get to see her on the Diamond League circuit, the Continental Tour circuit, and hopefully be one of the, the names we, th- we throw on the dartboard as potential wild cards to defeat a Elaine Thompson hurrah. Because she had an incredible season. You can't take... You can't take away her season. Obviously, she would have loved to end it with a gold medal or at least a medal. But at the end of the day, she did run sub seven seconds. She did get fourth in the world. It's still pretty good. I mean, if I went to my parents tomorrow and I had to tell you to let you know, I ran a top 10 all-time mark and I'm fourth in the world, I highly doubt my parents are going to be like, son, we were looking for more from you. You're kind of disappointing us. No, it's an incredible season. So no disappointment for the Polish athlete. Do, though, want to give a big shout out to our Americans because Briscoe, St. Price go 2 3, two medals for Team USA. Briscoe breaking seven seconds, running 699. Very impressive. St. Price, who super new to the whole Team USA thing, like she was basically having kind of a one off season. Everyone's like, who's this Mary Beth St. Price girl? Rens- Rens at altitude in Colorado. What's going on here? And now that she's able to not only make her first team, but then bring it, turn it into, translate it into a, a global medal, nothing but uh, impressive reaction to what St. Price did. Um, and excited to see what she's going to do. I mean, Briscoe and St. Price, here's the question. Are either of these women going to be able to either challenge Shakari? In the outdoor. Are they going to be able to challenge a Jenna Prandini? Are they going to be able to challenge a Gabby Thomas? Are they going to be able to challenge an Abby Steiner? Are they going to be able to challenge an Aaliyah Hobbs? Are they going to be able to challenge a Tiana Daniels? There's a lot of unknowns there. We don't know. But I think we're going to have to start when we look at a start list at a random meet and we see Mary Beth on the line or Micaiah Briscoe on the line. We got we to gotta make sure we watch that race to see what's going on and not be like, oh, I'll wait till Shakari runs. No, we got to wait. When Briscoe runs and St. Price runs now, it's going to be must-see uh, track results. But yeah, again, Ken Bungie, 696. Incredible. Now, that was obviously, there's other finals that went down um, on, on the track. But before we break down more of the, the qualifiers and the finals, 